Well, hello everybody. Thank you for joining us again for another FFG Live here on YouTube. I am, as always, Josh Massey, and I am joined today by a television, AKA Caleb Grace, and okay. Michael, the Bogfather, Bogs. Hi. So thank you guys for joining me. As you have probably seen from the description below and from our posts leading up to this, we are talking about Marvel Champions today. So we're gonna cover a few topics. I'm actually super excited for our main event, but we'll get there in just a second. So uh, yeah, we are going to talk a little bit about the release date. We are gonna talk about some other things that you may or may not be able to see, the angle that you're looking at that are on the table. We're gonna talk about some of the things that we have missed because we haven't done a Marvel Champs live stream in uh, what I would refer to as a hot minute. It has been a hot minute. Because that's that's what cool people say, right? That's, the that's, the hip I'm cool youngsters. When I say that, yeah, okay, so. cool, cool. And you're much younger than me, I'm sure. So yeah, we're yeah, good. I'm only we're 20. good. <laughs> that's what we tell people. Sweet. I just learned something new about the Bogfather. Very young Bogfather. But uh, yeah, and then what we're going to do is we're going to cover some of the more exciting moments for you guys from the sets that you've been working on, starting with Galaxy's Most Wanted and up through Mad Titans. Mm -hmm. uh, then we've got a bunch of questions that we asked recently, and we'll be getting more questions through the chat. We'll be covering those at the end of the stream, and then we'll say goodbye to everybody. So if you know you want to jump to a specific part and you're watching this later, you kind of have an idea of where we're going to be. So we're going to start by talking about the release. So as we talked about in our last stream, the world is in a crazy place and shipping, all deliveries are delayed all over, production is delayed all over the place. So what I can tell you is that the goal is to still get Mad Titans out by the end of this year. So we're crossing our fingers that we can provide that for everybody and honestly for ourselves as well. We want it to. So that is what I can tell you at this point. Hopefully we'll have more updates soon and we can make announcements on our socials and all that. Next bit, I think we're gonna to go to the top down camera for this. We have a bunch of new game mats for Marvel Champions. Uh, these are new Game Genic line game mats. They are not currently available to order yet, but we wanted to give everybody a sneak peek before they were available. They should be coming up on the Asmodee store soon. That's all I can say is the FFG soon. Hashtag. Because that's, 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 is that a thing still? It's also, yeah, cool people Hashtag? Do it. Okay, I, cool yeah, people say hashtag do it, and so do the hashtag. Cool. Cool. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to be a cool kid today. Yeah. <laughs> cool by proxy. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. The, nearby. Yeah. <laughs> cool, so yeah, game mats are absolutely gorgeous. I might accidentally sneak one or more of these home today. <laughs> Don't tell Casey. Stealing is not cool. It's not stealing. They, I, I, Borrowing is cool. I got to make sure that they work. So I have to test oh, on okay. them yeah, that's, that's, that's at cool. home that's cool. forever. <laughs> okay, so now let's get into the meat of it. So what we did, we, we had some ideas. We were going to do an unboxing, but we wanted to do something a little different because, as I said before, we haven't really had a live stream for a while and haven't covered a lot of content. So what I've done is I've reached out to these two who, just so everybody's aware, are my favorite developers at FFG. They are. So don't tell anybody else that. But I reached out to these two and had them pick their favorites. So their top picks, things that have either unique stories or really cool ability combo kind of things, and they gave me a list. So I grabbed the cards, but didn't really pay attention to everything that they do. And it's been a while since I've looked at them, so this is gonna be fun for me and you, I hope. Hope for me. I know it'll be fun for you. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we're just going to get into it. What we've done is I have set aside a stack of Caleb Grace cards, and I am going to draw one of them. And then Caleb is going to tell us a bit about the card and what makes it unique, fun, exciting. So actually, would you like to cut the deck for me, boys? Yeah, of course. Make sure we're not giving him something too easy. Right, exactly, exactly, because I definitely stacked that deck. Okay. So we have, whoop, I already had a card in there. Uh, hide that. So we have the Mighty Avengers that we are going to be oh. talking about first. So, Starting off with a bang. Caleb, tell us a little bit about your Mighty Avengers. Uh, well, you know, just, just so that everyone watching knows, I've got like a PDF open on my computer. So if you see me 
looking down. I'm looking up the cards we're talking about here. Uh, so Mighty Avengers is uh, a really exciting support card in the leadership aspect. What makes it exciting is it's the first uh, team traded support card. These are uh, subgenre we uh, we're looking forward to exploring in the game. I think fans of the comics and the movies will recognize right away kind of what this card is all about. Uh, so it reads, play under any player's control, max one team card per player. If each of your characters has the Avenger trait, each ally you control gets plus one thwart and plus one attack. So the idea here is uh, you're rewarded for just going all Avengers with your deck and uh, building up an Avenger team. Nice. Yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's it's our first uh, sampling. Um, looking forward to doing more. Cool. All right. And now I'm not going to have you cut this one because you'll <laughs> cut to one that you want. So I'm going to shuffle up the deck here for Boggs, Mr. Snoop Boggy Boggs. All right. So we've got Starhawk. Okay. 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 Yeah, uh, Starhawk was a fun one. So his ability is when he takes damage exactly equal to his remaining hit points, he gets to be returned to your hand. Uh, he was originally designed by Aaron Haltum, uh, who helped with the Galaxy's Most Wanted Wave. Um, and it was one of those abilities that I don't think I would have ever really thought of. I, I was kind of looking through the cards that he was testing and came upon that one. I'm like, this one is, is so cool, it's so interesting. Um, so yeah, Aaron, Aaron was really excited for that card. I was very excited for that card. Um, and it's a card that I put in a lot of my protection decks just because I have a lot of fun with it. And two, I just, you know, I know that, that, uh, Aaron was, was pretty proud of that design. So, nice. um, yeah, I've always found that one to be pretty fun. That one's for you, Aaron. <laughs> and if you're not watching, I'm sad. You should be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fix it. <laughs> All right. Cool. So we got Spectrum or er, sorry. Starhawk. I'm thinking of other cards that may or may not be in the stack. All right, so now we've got Living Tribunal for Caleb. Oh, this is another uh, forerunner in the game. Um, so the Living Tribunal is a unique event card with the Cosmic Entity trait. And uh, this, this works uh, a little differently than your standard event. So you can see it has action. Shuffle this card into the encounter deck. Um, and then it has a when revealed effect. So when revealed, remove two threat from the main scheme and remove this card from the game. This effect cannot be canceled. Um, so what's going on here is, uh, is this is going to replace your encounter card reveal for that turn. So that by itself is, is a really powerful effect, right? That instead of getting another minion or a side scheme or something nasty like that, Instead, you, uh, you're you getting something that actually is helping you a little bit. So removing two threat from the main scheme is not necessarily like, a, oh my gosh, two threat for, for two cost. It's more the fact that it's removing two threat in addition to uh, not getting an encounter card in that spot. Right. Uh, so this the inspiration for this was really um, Marvel's full of these like really powerful cosmic entities that... Uh, occasionally interact with the heroes, uh, particularly ones like Adam Warlock. And uh, we were just trying to think of what would be a thematically appropriate way to, to represent them in the game, because uh, they're never on anyone's team. You know, the Living Tribunal does not join the Avengers or the Guardians. Right. It's, uh, it's out there, you know, judging the cosmos. And uh, so we wanted to kind of represent that in a way of, like, it kind of shows up whenever it feels like showing up, you know. Um, and it might just get discarded as a boost, you know, which uh, you might have paid two cost for a dead boost. So there's a little bit of risk reward involved. Um, but from from playing, it's a lot of fun. Like when it does happen, it's it definitely swings the tempo of the game. And uh, before people ask, like it has a player card back. That's on purpose. This is a casual game. You can just shuffle it right in, um, and you can see like a player card coming. Uh, that's okay. Uh, if people want to, if they want to be like more mysterious about it, they can sleep their cards and do do however they want with that. Um, but it would have taken a lot of extra space and a lot of extra rules to right. put an encounter <laughs> card back on it, and we did not have the the room for that. So we thought this idea is just too fun. Let's just throw it in with the player card back. Very cool. All right, back over to box. Bring it on, Snoop Boggy Boggs. <gasps> Ooh, a couple questions. 
Uh, so backside of Living Tribunal, you just covered. So it has the player back. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then um, if it comes out as a boost card, does it go back to the player discard or to the encounter discard? So that, that's any time. Yeah, the question. rules for the game are anytime a card uh, leaves play, it goes to its owner's discard pile. So since this is my player card, it will go to my discard pile. Okay. So whether it's whether it's revealed or discarded as a boost, it's going to go to my discard pile. So it'll it'll come through, and I'll be um I'll be able to do it again. Oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, I overspoke. Uh, if the when revealed revol resolves, it's it's removed from the game. But sure. if it comes up as a boost, yeah, it'll go to my discard pile and get another chance. Yeah, it will come to yours. Okay, yeah. cool. Thank you. So this one, I love the art on it. I do need to start by saying that. So good choice. We've got beast mode. It took a long time to draw. <laughs> Sorry for my subpar handwriting, everybody. But we are going to get a version of this card up on the screen for you. In a moment? Already? Already, yeah. <laughs> so I believe Beast Mode is the side scheme that increases the damage dealt to characters with uh, confused status cards and stun status cards. Um, so when we set out to design different modular sets in the Hood Scenario Pack, we really wanted each modular set not only to feel different from, you know, what was in the pack as a whole, but to really feel different from everything that has existed before it. We wanted to kind of get wacky and crazy. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so we really tried to, you know, push each modular set in, in a very hard, different direction. Uh, for the Beastie Boys modular set, um, we uh, decided to kind of focus on stun status cards and confused status cards in ways that we really hadn't played with them before. So uh, there's actually two cards kind of connected to this one. Um, Griffin, who is a uh, minion, and then Mandrill, who's another minion. Uh, Griffin has an effect that stuns, Mandrill has an effect that confuses, and they both kind of play with those status cards in their own way. This enhances them further and just makes them that much stronger. So. Um, if you kind of like trying to dodge status cards and, you know, making sure that uh, the effects that come with them just aren't going to overwhelm you, then I think this is probably a set that, that you're going to enjoy. Right. And there's something that I didn't mention when I showed off the really cool art for this card yeah. initially. This is not something people have seen yet. No, no. What is this from? This is from the Hood Scenario Pack. Yes. Yeah. So this is new stuff. We wanted to give you guys something that was new and exciting because we know everything else is, you know, out in the world somewhere, somehow. But we wanted to give you guys something really cool. So we've got Beast Mode and maybe even some more awesome. good cards <laughs> coming up. All right, back to Caleb. So Caleb, this one is, you know, double-sided. So oh. yeah, I get to see it before I draw the card. <laughs> so you actually, you wanted this side of it. You wanted Cosmo. So tell me oh, a little yeah, bit yeah. about okay. this version of Cosmo. Oh, uh, now I just gotta find him. So yeah, you kind of gave away. It's he's on the reverse side of a of a side scheme. Um, so Cosmo's a really popular character for for Guardians of the Galaxy fans. The the uh, telepathic, you know, Russian cosmonaut dog. I mean, what's not to love? Um, he heads up the security force on Nowhere. Uh, he's a longtime ally of the Guardians. And we were just so excited to, to work him into the story. So if you are playing campaign mode and you defeat uh, the side scheme that he's the reverse side of, then you'll, you'll uh, gain control of Cosmo. And um, you can see that uh, he's got this ongoing text that the first player gains control of Cosmo. So he will pass around with the first player token. Everybody get a chance to uh to work with cosmo uh and he also it says uh, cosmo does not count against the ally limit so he's just uh he's just extra he's just bonus um and the forced interrupt there when cosmo leaves play remove him from the game that's really just uh because he doesn't have a player card or encounter card back he's got that side scheme so he needs he needs to leave play to avoid any confusion uh but if you're playing campaign mode you can look forward to getting cosmo on your team and i believe it's even possible to earn him as an ally for, for more scenarios than just the, the first one he appears in. Nice. Cool. All right. Back to box. We have making an entrance. And I guess because yours are from multiple sets, mm -hmm. where Caleb's are all going to be from Mad Titan's Shadow, 
you want to tell us what set it's from or what character pack it's yeah, from? Yeah, I think um, that's actually a great question. Making an entrance is from the Venom Hero Pack. So from what I remember this card, it went through a couple different iterations. We wanted to give Justice a tool that let them you know, add some sort of um, additional effect to their, their repertoire of, of effects. Uh, and the, the iterations that we went through, I think they were kind of a little more straightforward at first, where it's just like, you know, just remove threat from a scheme. Um, and if you do, here's a bonus. And over time, we eventually landed on this. You have to actually thwart, you get the plus two bonus, but if you can remove the threat, you, you get uh, the healing at the end. Um, and it was uh, one of those cards that was, we didn't land on the design immediately, but uh, you know, through play testing and iterations, um, it's a card that, that I've always really, really enjoyed. Uh, it was fun to make, and I, for me, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun to play. Um, so yeah, I just, I have fond memories of this because it was sometimes when you're designing cards, sometimes the design process doesn't quite go the way you want and you got to just work with it over and over. But this was more of like an, a natural evolution of things. It, it felt very, uh, kind of fluid and, and where it ended up was, is, you know, a design that I'm, I'm happy with. Cool. All right. And we've got another one over here. We've got Avengers Tower, which is a double-sided card as well. Yeah, when you said event, uh, double-sided uh, a second ago, I kind of assumed that it was uh, Avengers Tower. Well, I shuffled uh, them together so that you could get them both back to back. Right. You're welcome. <laughs> sure. <laughs> now I just gotta, I just gotta flip to it here in my. <clears throat> Sorry. All right, there it is. So yeah, Avengers Tower is the centerpiece of the uh, second scenario in the Mad Titan Shadow. Um, it's called Tower Defense. And in this scenario, you're trying to prevent Avengers Tower from, from being destroyed by the, the Black Order. Um, and we kind of had fun with it. The idea of uh, Avengers Tower is already a support in the game mm -hmm. uh, that allows you to reduce the cost of you know Avenger allies and if all your allies are Avengers, right, lets you keep an extra one in play. And uh, so this was something that came up in development that we were kind of excited to try. So you can see here um, on Avengers Tower, it says the unique rule does not apply to Avengers Tower. So when you set up the game, uh, if you want, like everybody can put Avengers Tower into play. So everybody can reduce cost and have an extra Avenger uh, as kind of the the benefit of like defending your home. Um, but you can see that uh, it has a forced response after damage is placed here. If there's at least nine per player damage, remove all of it, and then you flip it over. So if you want to go ahead and I had it on side. the wrong side first. My mistake. Oh, whoops. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's a little bit of a lag here, so I'm not seeing what you're seeing. I'm sorry. Um, so once you flip it to the damage side, then it has this one reveal that's going to discard each other Avengers Tower from play. So there's a little bit of Again, risk reward. In this case, you, you kind of get the reward up front where you can have multiple Avengers Tower uh, copies in play. But uh, if you let the stronghold side get destroyed, then everybody loses that support um, and you can't have it anymore. And of course, if this side gets destroyed, uh, the players lose the game. Right. So you got to be very careful to you know protect your home. Cool. Yeah, you, you don't want to let the tower go down, ever. No. It's not good for anyone. All right, box. Welcome aboard. Oh, okay. That yeah. Zero cost event. <laughs> Welcome aboard is another card in the Venom Hero Pack. Uh, I believe it's in the uh, cards at the end of the pack. Um, so for that card, we wanted to reinforce this idea that the Guardians are good at bringing, you know, outside people onto their team. They've done it a couple times. They did it with Iron Man. They did it with Ant Man. I know they've they've kind of done it with a couple different heroes. So. Uh, welcome aboard essentially lets you do that as you play it um, you reduce the cost of the next ally played i believe it's that phase or that turn by two uh, this phase this phase by two so that can apply to any player at the game you can only play it if you're a guardian but i could you know play it as star lord and then my friend who might be playing iron man could then put down an ally and get that cost reduction so um it's it's it, thematically there it's it's to say like, hey, the Guardians are bringing people into the team like they've done in the past, and mechanically it's just a flexible way to sort of help your teammates and cheat some allies out for cheaper. Nice, nice. And we now discovered that Boggs likes cheating. I do, so, yeah. That's cool. 
Good to know. <laughs> don't, cheat. don't cheat, kids. Remind me not to play games with you. Yeah, yeah, that's probably, probably, probably good. <laughs> All right. Caleb, we have Blue Marvel coming out from your stack. Oh, right. Yeah, I was excited to uh, put Blue Marvel on the list, uh, mostly just because uh, this was a character I didn't know a lot about until I started reading the uh, Mighty Avengers comics, and it, he's basically uh, just a really powerful guy who's kind of been, like, around a long time, and, uh, you know, everyone's a little surprised, like, why didn't we know you were here? And he's just kind of been hiding himself away, um, working on his own personal quest to, to help find his son, got trapped in a different dimension or something. Anyway, he's, uh, he's an absolute uh, genius and, and really powerful, and he and Spectrum kind of form a relationship in the comic, and so I was excited to, uh, to include him here. And uh, in the comic where I was introduced to him, um, Spectrum's power is like overloaded and, and uh, she's unable to uh, regain control and, and Blue Marble just kind of like works his magic and helps her to, uh, to kind of pull herself back together. And so that's why I wanted him to have this ability that allows her to uh, change forms and, and interact with that. So this was kind of a, uh, kind of a two for one kind of card because I get to talk about Blue Marble and Spectrum at the same time. Um, so his ability after Blue Marble enters play uh, change energy forms. Uh, I've seen a, a few uh, questions in the comment section, people asking about how Spectrum's um, transformation works when she change energy forms. Um, so the way it's intended is uh, she's got three different energy forms. They all start and play face down as you're an alter ego. And when you flip to hero form, you choose one of them to, f to flip face up. And then her whole kit, like Blue Marvel and other cards, are interacting, say, change forms. So when you change forms, you're going to Take the one you have and turn it face down, and then you're going to turn the next one face up so that you're constantly moving between the three and taking advantage of, of uh, different abilities. And Planar Kit is really dynamic because you, you have abilities like this that let you pick the one you want in the moment. Um, this was actually one of MJ's favorite uh, uh, hero kits um, to play just for all that flexibility and focus on the design. So I hope people really enjoy this. I hope there's some Blue Marvel fans out there excited like me to uh, get them into the game. I will have to look into Blue Marvel to become a fan. <laughs> it was one that I was not aware of either. Yeah. Sorry, Blue Marvel fans. I'm the worst. <laughs> All right. And Boggs. Going back. Okay. What is the name of this card? Schadenfreude. Cool. Can you say that one more time? Because I'm not going to. I be, so it's I believe it's German. Uh huh. Schadenfreude. Okay. Yep. I'm, I'm, that's I'm, that's the card, like everyone. Ninety nine percent. Somebody's gonna correct me, but he doesn't know. What he's Which is why about. I didn't yeah, say it. <laughs> so this card, um, again, I talked about how Aaron Haltom helped uh, with the Galaxy's Most Wanted wave. Uh, he designed, predominantly, he designed the uh, Rocket Hero deck and the Groot Hero deck, um, and I think this is one of those cards that kind of came later in the design. So Rocket, if you've played him, he's, he's very aggressive. Uh, he likes big weapons. He's got like a rocket launcher. Really? Yeah, yeah I know. I, like... I, I, we wanted to put a different spin okay, on the rocket okay. blowing up stuff. Right. We thought okay. people hadn't seen that before. That's, that's interesting, yeah, but yeah, I'll yeah. roll with it. Yeah, yeah, you know, just something new. Um, so, you know, and he's also got some abilities to help with his, his tactical prowess. Uh, but after we had sort of put his kit together, we realized that he didn't really have any defensive options. Um, and if you're playing together with Groot, that's probably okay. But if you're going solo or with other heroes, it's nice to have something that kind of helps you either uh, heal up or, or, you know, prevent yourself from taking damage. So we decided, I think we had this art just kind of lying around. Um, this was one of our spare pieces, and it was just like, it was perfect for Rocket. So we talked mm -hmm. about it, and, and I believe that, that Aaron came up with, with uh, this ability and this, this, this card text. Um, so, yeah. so did Aaron come up with the title as well? I, I don't know if Aaron did specifically. He might have, or maybe it was just the discussion. Okay. Just the just it's it's the Schadenfreude, from what I understand, is the pleasure from hurting others, <laughs> which Jeez. is Rocket Raccoon. So, uh -huh. okay. um, it just seemed to fit perfectly. Okay, good. So I don't feel very bad about not being able to read yeah. that. <laughs> it's probably with good, it yeah. not being English. Yeah. So yeah. don't judge me, people. All right. Caleb, yeah. would you prefer that I start on the alter ego or the hero side of Adam Warlock? Oh, yeah. Let's, let's look at his alter ego first, please. 
Alter ego it is. Yeah, I'll just grab him here. Um, yeah, that, that's funny. I'm sorry. I failed to uh, clarify since since Adam Warlock's alter ego is the same as his hero type. Right. <laughs> I was definitely thinking of his alter ego when uh, when I added him to the list uh, just because he's, he's such a unique character and what makes him so unique is largely on his alter ego side. Um, so I'll just read it here. He has uh, his abilities called the Avatar of Life. It says your deck must include an equal number of cards from all four aspects. You cannot include more than one copy of any non Adam Warlock card by title. Uh, so this is obviously a really unique ability in the game. Uh, the vast majority of heroes are limited to just one aspect. Adam is required to include all four. Uh, and the trade-off being that he cannot have more than one copy of any aspect card. Um, this just made him so much fun to design and and to play and just opens up all kinds of possibilities within the game. Plus it just felt so appropriate for who he is. Right. Uh, if you want to flip it over, you know, uh, we can just give a quick example of one thing he can do with all those different cards is his battle mage ability. When he's in hero form, he has this action. Discard one card from your hand, limit once per phase. If that card is aggression, deal two damage to an enemy. Justice, remove two threat from a scheme. Protection, heal one damage from an ally. Uh, or leadership, give a hero plus one thwart, plus one attack, and plus one defense this round. Um, so these are obviously really good effects, and the fact that you have this choice every turn um, is, is pretty cool. But at the same time, that card you're discarding is the only copy you have of that card. Right. <laughs> So it's uh, it seems like just crazy powerful, and it is, but there's always a, kind of a hidden cost there of, of what you're giving up to do that. Right. Um, my testers all responded instantly to this guy. They just thought he was super fun, and uh, I'm really excited for players to, to try him out and see what they think. Nice. And I'm going to throw something out that I did not clear with, you know, Casey or anybody else on the marketing side, but there may or may not be some unique versions of the Adam Warlock card coming out in future OP products. <laughs> Don't get mad at me. <laughs> no comment. That's for, that's for you. All of you. <laughs> All right. Bogs. We've got another, ooh, another really cool piece of art. Mandrill. Mandrill. Uh, so Mandrill, I believe he's one, when he comes into play, he uh, confuses a bunch of characters. Uh, and Pull then it up he, for you. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Thank you. Uh, yes, when revealed, confuse each character you control. So it's pretty nasty. Uh, and then Mandrill gains Retaliate X, where X is equal to the number of confused characters in play. And he gets that, whether it's on himself or the villain, your allies, your hero. Um, so this is, you know, another way that we were trying to reinforce that new design space with the status cards, the stun status card and the confused status card. Uh, if you, you know, put Mandrill down and you have a lot of allies, especially, he's going to become really difficult to take care of. You, you kind of have to just let him sit on the board um, and, you know, either get rid of those confused status cards or if you're able to, you know, just uh, deal a big, huge attack to him, like a swing web kick or something. Uh, to take him out to avoid that retaliate. Um, so yeah, yeah, he's he's part of that Beastie Boy set, and he uh, he comes along with uh, Griffin and the um, I forget the name of the other the other one that we just talked about. Beast mode, That's beast mode, one. beast mode. Yeah, yeah. So they kind of all work together cool. synergistically. So also from the hood. Yep. Also, also a card nobody's yeah. seen until today. Yeah, I saw it, but nobody well. else did. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you wouldn't let me see it. I was really upset. Like, yeah. hey, I work on the game too. I just like I push him away. And oh, okay, let's, yeah. this is my space. Well. You know, I've I've seen you guys behaving like that in the office mm. before, and I I do have to say, I love it. We're actually yeah. we're we're the reason they sent everyone. <laughs> like these two can't be together. Co yes, COVID was part of the reason we all left the office. <laughs> they were the rest of the reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we were sixty percent of it. Oh boy. <laughs> All right, so I think, I mean, we've got some questions coming. We've got time for probably two more each, depending on how much Caleb yaks, am I right? <laughs> what? What, Caleb? Did you, no, you didn't say anything? Okay, never mind. Sorry. That was, that was weird. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so glad that I drew this card. So, you your think? next card is going to be Shwarma. 
And before oh, yeah. you get talking about shawarma, I was very excited today to explain why this was able to be in the game and why it was funny to someone who will not be named because they happen to be, I don't know, maybe doing the dishes instead of watching the end credits after they finish the movie? I don't know. I, I try not to judge, but sometimes it's difficult. <laughs> All right, so tell us about shawarma, Caleb. <laughs> Uh, so I think Boggs actually helped me come up with this one. Uh, this Probably is in idea. the campaign content for uh, for Mad Titan Shadow, and uh, the way the development process goes, uh, or at least the way it went for this product, is I had the five scenarios kind of designed and outlined, and uh, but I wasn't really sure what to do for for the campaign. Uh, I was just looking for some ideas, you know. Um, I think together we came up with the idea that each scenario would have kind of a, a encounter side scheme that would get put into play uh, to to kind of ratchet up the tension in campaign mode that you, you'd have another thing that you have to deal with immediately. But then on the flip side, it could be a chance to gain a reward or a power up or something that would make you feel good about overcoming that that obstacle. And uh, so this this goes along with the tower defense scenario that we're talking about. So you're you're in New York City, Avengers Tower is under attack. And uh, do you want to just flip it over and show them the other side, too? Because <laughs> isn't it called, like, the, Defend the Shawarma Place? Or the other something? side is blank. Oh, sorry, sorry. It's not on the other it's side. It's not on the other side. It's the, no, yep, it's what leads side, to it. I think the side scheme that you have to do is called, like, Defend the Shawarma Place or something <laughs> like that. So it's like in their rampage around New York City, like the Black Order is actually like going after the shawarma place. <laughs> um, but if you can, uh, if you can defeat them and save the shawarma place, then you can earn some uh, shawarma at the end of the scenario and you know have a nice bite to eat. Uh, and you can see it's actually a really great card. It's uh, it's a resource card that gives one of each uh, you know resource type. You've got, you know, all three of them, and it's max one per deck. So there's four copies in the box, so everybody can get one. And uh, I, another card that the playtesters just instantly loved, and uh, for the theme, but also as they play through the campaign, it's just such a great card to have in your hand uh, at any time. So uh, another one that we, we, we just hope people get a real kick out of it when they play and enjoy some shawarma. For sure. I, I just love the idea of... Yeah, I mean, saving New York and the world. And what's your reward? Of course it's shawarma. There's no better reward than good shawarma. Yeah. So, I love it. I think it's spectacular. I'm very glad that I just drew into that one. Right. All right, Boggs. How, oh, hey, look at this. We've covered this one already. But we haven't. <laughs> We've got Cosmo. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. The original Cosmo. So uh, yeah, this this Cosmo was uh, one that that went through a couple different iterations. Um, we wanted to represent his his psionic psychic abilities, uh, and one of the mechanics that kind of came up as a suggestion for that was was naming a, a, a card type. And if you get the name correctly, you're gonna you know discard a card. Um, you get to do this ability, which is to prevent him from taking consequential damage when he attacks or thwarts. So. Um, yeah, I've always had a lot of fun with this card. Uh, it was, it was, um, it was one that, uh, yeah, just, you know, came about through playtesting, but, but I, I feel like thematically it fits pretty well because you're, you're really trying to use your own mental powers to predict what is going to happen. I've seen a couple questions come up with this one, like, can you target decks that are like, you know, not just the encounter deck, not just the player deck? You can. So if you're playing against, um, for instance, Red Skull, you could do the Red Skull's side scheme deck. All of the cards in that deck are side schemes, so you would predict successfully every single time. Hmm. Or in the case of Doctor Strange, you could do your invocation deck. Um, so, you know, some scenarios and some some heroes might give Cosmo quite a bit of consistency, but um, in those cases, you know, it's it's sort of just a, um, a uh, it's a very like narrow subset of, of, of scenarios and heroes that that happens. And if you don't like that effect, you could just choose your player deck or your encounter deck. Right. So. Cool. All right. Balance the scales. Uh, yeah. 
So this is one I think some players, uh, this is an effect I think some players guess uh, might, might be coming. Um, I just need to rotate my view here so I can read it. Uh, so this is uh, the second main scheme in the Thanos scenario. Uh, so you, you can actually, if you're really worried about this going off, you can, you can work overtime to try to stop Thanos from getting this far. But if you're unable to prevent Thanos from, uh, from reaching stage two, then you have this uh, when revealed, each player shuffles their discard pile into their deck. Each player removes the top half of their deck rounded down from the game. So they get so, snapped away. So, yep. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was something uh, that, that Nate French actually requested. Ooh. You know, could we, could we have a moment that, that reflects the snap? And it was something I think Boggs and I were both excited about exploring too. Um, so this this one was like it 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 made some waves in the playtester group. I think just about everybody loved it. For uh, well, they, you know, no one loves having half their deck snap away. But right. They all loved the theme and the the impact. There were a couple holdouts. You know, um, in fairness, there were a couple of people like I don't know if I like this. This is so mean. <laughs> um, so that's that's why it's on you know like scheme two a is there that you do have a chance uh, to try to avoid it, um, but if you're playing campaign mode, you know we really wanted it to be impactful. So uh, initially there was talk of like what if all those cards are just gone for the rest of the campaign and you can never get them back? And I was like ah, I think that's too rough. But uh, if if Thanos does indeed snap away um, half of your deck uh, in this scenario. In this scenario only, it's removed from the game. But at the beginning of each other, you'll just discard the hat first half of your deck. Like immediately during setup, you'll start with half a deck. You, those cards will be in your discard pile, so you can get them back. Right. But it's going to have uh, you know repercussions that that last through the rest of this uh, campaign. Jeez. So it's a very impactful moment. We're pretty excited to to bring that to what, what I'm sure anyone who's been to see the movies remembers that moment. So. Uh, we're excited to try to bring it uh, to the to the game in a little way. Nice. All right, one more, Bugs. And because you're in house, do you want to pick it, or should we just go from the top again? Yeah, let's. Uh, I'll, I'll choose one. All right, let's do something a little bit different. Um, oh yeah, you know what? Let's let's uh, let's spoil this one. I think, All right. I think players will. So we'll another listen. hood. Another hood card. card. Yeah, card from the hood scenario pack. Back alley enclave. Yeah. And I, I'm putting them on the stand. <laughs> it doesn't really make sense to put them on the stand, but I'm doing it anyway. It's good for me. I, All I right. Remember. So back alley enclave is part of the. Um, it's part of a modular set that has multiple settings within it. And the special thing about settings is that when they come into play, they sort of uh, remove other environments that have the setting trait from play. Um, thank you. So. Uh, back alley enclave, it'll come down. If there's another environment with setting, it'll get rid of it through its win revealed. Uh, and then it'll also surge, so you'll draw another card. The reason it surges is because it gives every single character in the game plus one attack. So it's like this back alley brawl. People are just, you know, fighting each other, wailing on each other. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's intended to just, just sort of like change your tactics completely. Maybe before you were sort of being reserved, you were playing a protection deck or a justice deck. Now you're encouraged to just you know be very aggressive, but also simultaneously you have to watch out for the enemies who are equally empowered. So um, all of the setting environments in this modular set do something similar. They affect the entire board, um, and uh, the reception for this card during testing was in all of these cards very very positive. I think people like how it kind of changes up the pace of the game. Nice. So you know what. We're going to start with this question. We're going to get into some questions now. We'll start with this one since you just, you know, we're talking about a little bit from the hood scenario. Sure. So, um, what is your favorite modular encounter set from the hood pack? Oh, man. Um, I think probably my favorite one. I cannot remember the name of it right now, but it's, uh, I think it's, is it Citywide? Emergency, state of emergency, something to that effect. Basically, it's a modular set that has many. Oh, I'm gonna take off my mask. I apologize. It's a it's a modular set that has many side schemes, uh, and the side schemes all have win revealed effects. And then within that modular set, there's I believe two or three copies of a treachery 
when you draw it, it says you resolve all of the win reveal effects on any side schemes in play. Um, so if you're not careful, if you're letting those side schemes build up, and additionally, if you com uh, combine that modular set with other modular sets which have side schemes with mm -hmm. revealed effects, it's going to make all those happen again. So, um, I, I've, I, I, the, so the theme there is that you know the city is there, there's one part that's like burning, there's one part I think that that there's like a, a boat accident, and there's just all this chaos within the city, and you got to kind of scramble to take care of it and make sure that it doesn't get worse over time. And uh, I, I like kind of the street level theme quite a bit. You know, yeah. I, I love the Avengers. I love the, the the Guardians. But my favorite is like when we can be on the streets and sort of act within the city itself. And, and this sort of elicits that feeling. Nice. And then this this is a very valid question. And we've talked about two versions of Cosmo. Yes. Why do neither of them have the trait good boy? <laughs> well, he's just inherently a good boy. You okay. I mean, you just you know. You don't know have to announce it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just you actually we're gonna expected. add a rule we haven't done it yet but every time you play Cosmo you do have to tell him he's a good boy doesn't matter the version ah, <laughs> so that that will be added That'll to be future next, rule yeah, books yeah okay good to know so. <laughs> speaking of rule books um, we have had a lot of questions come in some of those have been rules questions this is not where we're gonna be talking about rules questions so if you have those ask them in other channels and they will be covered in. FAQs and you know rules forums and all that jazz. So you can find those, just not on this live stream. Sorry. All right. So let's just say you know what. In general, we'll start with Caleb this time since Boggs asked, answered the last one. What has been your favorite character or scenario to design? This is a question from Matt F W Thomas or F Thomas, maybe. <laughs> Oh, it's hard to pick a favorite. I feel like I give the same answer every time someone asks me a question about favorites. It's usually whatever I've worked on most recently because it's what I'm thinking about, what I'm passionate about. So in this case, I, I couldn't actually say because it hasn't been announced yet. <laughs> okay. So there's a spoiler for everybody. We're still working on Marvel Champs. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's good for me. That's kind of my job. <laughs> okay. Cool. Do you have one that you can pick that isn't? Yeah, yeah I could pick. Uh, I think, okay. Uh, so to this day, and it might just be because she was the first hero that you know, I was able to sit down and just kind of design from the ground up, but Miss Marvel has, has always been my favorite. Um, I, I really love her play style. Um, you know, she's, there's a lot of subtleties there. She's very powerful, but I think at face value, she seems like she isn't. And I, I like when, when card games sort of encourage that sort of design where it's like you look at something and you're like, how am I going to make that work? And then you're like, oh, yeah, that really works. Uh, that's Miss Marvel's whole design, in, in, in my opinion. Um, you know, and, and beyond just her mechanical design, thematically, I, she's, she's one of my favorite characters. I didn't know much about her before working on the game and having to, like, research about her was it just, it was just a, a very enjoyable experience. Her comics are amazing. She's an amazing character. So um, I think she... She's probably, yeah, still my, my favorite nice. of anything that I've designed for this game so far. Cool. All right. And this may be even more important than the good boy question. <laughs> I don't know how it's a question, but I will ask it as a question. This is from Darth Dalton Boy. And the question is, dance battle? <laughs> and box? No. Uh, <laughs> taking it back. All right. So dance battle, yeah, the, uh, the dance battle. I, I believe it's referring to the the Guardians of the Galaxy movie, the first one. Um, and so that was you know something that came up in conversation within the studio during playtesting. We, we thought it was a funny moment, but ultimately, like we are basing our version of the game off of the comic books itself. Right. Um, and as much as we love that m moment in the movies, it just didn't quite fit with what we were going for. So. Uh, you know, and, and that's always sort of the case. We're always looking to the comics for inspiration. Sometimes we'll use general concepts, ideas from the movies and other media, but the comics are our our core um, sort of uh, information thing. I can't think of the word that I'm trying to think of right now. <laughs> information thing. That's that's, that's what I want to say. Things yeah, and that's stuffs. Exactly it. And stuffs. Yeah. Yep. So, um, <laughs> But yes, we, we did talk about dance battles quite a bit because it's, it's a great moment. I mean, that's something that happens in the office anyways. Yeah, yeah. Right, we don't dance have to be talking about anything Marvel. That was another anything. reason we got kicked out. Right. We wouldn't stop <laughs> doing dance battles. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, so 
Thanos. We're going to talk a little bit about Thanos. We had a bunch of people asking questions, but we're going to go with Damian Jerry's question. Uh, what led to the decision to have Thanos as the third villain in the set rather than the final villain or the finale villain? Sure. That, that's a great question. Um, and the answer is, uh, well, there's this whole story behind it. Um, the original plan was a pretty straightforward, like, uh, I think what players expected, you know, the original plan that I pitched was Thanos would be the final villain and you'd basically fight your way through the Black Order to get to him. Um, and when we presented that to the executives uh, in our vision document, um, the feeling was that it was all just a bit predictable. Uh, and, and they challenged us to say, can you, can you do something here unexpected? Um, something, you know, that, that fans won't see coming. Uh, and so, we had a really good conversation about that. Um, and I'm really happy with the outcome. The idea was, okay, um, everyone wants to see Thanos for sure. Everyone wants to see Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet. Um, you know, maybe he'll get to do the snap. You know, he'll definitely get to use the different stones to, to uh, attack you. So that has to be in there. And uh, But what can we do after that that will be even more exciting potentially, or at least very interesting. So I, I think of the box this way. Uh, instead of being a, a, just a step, I'm gonna use my hands here, a steady climb to the top where it's just all rising action to the fifth scenario. I actually think of this one as a little bit more of like a roller coaster ride where the first two scenarios are very much pointing at the third one. And then there's this little dip and then another rise with a, a sudden twist. Um, and I think, you know, the, the contents of the box have, have largely been spoiled so this you know i'll still give a, give a spoiler alert if people don't want to know the story just to tune out for a minute uh, otherwise i'm about to you know spoil the twist because i think it's already out there and people mostly know um but this is a, a comic i'm especially proud of the story that we constructed uh is that basically that that loki is behind the scenes kind of manipulating the situation he knows that he can't defeat Thanos. Thanos is too strong for him. So he's kind of manipulating things to try to uh, force Thanos to have to confront the Avengers to get the Avengers and the Guardians to defeat Thanos so that he can get the Infinity Gauntlet. And, uh, and he does that through his magic and his uh, trickery uh, so that what we have is in this, this, uh, this moment of, oh my gosh, we've actually defeated Thanos and wrestled the Infinity Gauntlet away and we should be, you know, doing a, a victory dance. And then instead, suddenly we have kind of a callback to uh, the, the first story box we did with, with Red Skull, where everything kind of goes uh, white or pink or whatever it is. And then reality is changed. And you're like, and I think someone even has the line of like, oh no, not again. And uh, we come to learn that, that Loki has the gauntlet and he's used it to depose Odin and uh, Odin is now um, captured and, and jailed in, in hell where Hela has him prisoner and uh, now Loki sits on the throne of Asgard with the Infinity Gauntlet and all of, all of existence is in danger again. Um, and we just thought, wow, that's a really compelling twist. That's, that's a pretty exciting story that hasn't been told to the best of our knowledge. Um, so the hope was give, give the fans exactly what they want where they can fight through the Black Order a little bit and face off with Thanos, but then also give them something that they didn't see coming. Hopefully, right. I, I didn't hear anyone say they they saw Loki behind it all from the beginning. So hopefully, you know, it's a little fun twist, and people enjoy that story. I'm especially proud uh, of the Hela and Loki scenarios in the box. I think they're two of the best that I've ever done. Um, so I really hope that people enjoy them when they get the chance to play. Very cool. Well, you kind of answered the next question too: who the villains are in. Mad Titan's Shadow. We've got the Black yeah. Order. We've got Thanos. We've got Hela. We've got Loki. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, let's see. Boggs, were any of these villains in either of these two boxes designed with the new Standard 2 and Expert 2 sets in mind? No, not necessarily. Uh, so I believe that the... the um, development of the hood scenario pack which is where the standard two and expert two sets come from uh, i believe that started 
toward the end of Mad Titan Shadows development. Um, so, you know, we were already finished with Galaxy's Most Wanted. We were already almost finished or, or well on our way with, with uh, Mad Titan Shadow um, before we started designing the Hood Scenario Pack. We knew in the Hood Scenario Pack with all of these modular sets that we wanted to offer these new standard and, and, and expert sets because they allow for more difficulty for players who want it. Um, but we weren't necessarily like specifically designing these in conjunction with those other two. Going forward, you know, our goal is to keep the game as accessible as possible, and we feel like the standard set is a great way to do it. The cards are, you know, they, they give the villains each base functionality. Uh, they are familiar to players, um, and, you know, we will continue testing with those, with the standard, just the normal one and the, the expert set, um, you know, going forward predominantly with those. but. Um, it, it, for players who do want an increased challenge, there's always those other sets available. Cool. All right, let's see. Next one. Uh, well, I mean, this is this is a fair question. Somebody's asking. Uh, I don't actually see the name on here, but when can we play as the villains? I want to play as the villains. There's an exclamation point, so I had to get excited about that one. Oh, oh, they're looking at each other. Nobody wants to say anything. I'm going to say it might be a Tuesday. I don't know which Tuesday, but Tuesday? No? Am I wrong? Well, there's there's a <laughs> podcast out there dedicated to looking at the game and evaluating cards from the villain perspective, the, the villain. Uh, so, you know, according to some, we're already playing as the villain. <laughs> You know, by 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 thwarting uh, what these really you know ingenious and driven people are trying to do to better the world. You know, <laughs> Thanos had a plan to eradicate hunger and right, and, strife. and, um, and, and the uh, Avengers and he stopped got him. In the way. <laughs> wow. So you know, it's all a matter of perspective. <laughs> uh, but obviously, if we had any like real plans, we couldn't discuss them until it's announced officially. Of course. Um, there's a lot of heroes to get through that people are still clamoring to see. It's it's in the comments every time we do these live streams. Is everyone asking about where's my favorite hero? So right. Um, I don't know that I really want to <laughs> think about trying to do everyone's favorite villains yet. We haven't even got to all everyone's favorite heroes. It's fair. That's fair. Thank you, Caleb. All right. Um, let's see. I had a, oh there we go. One on a pack that you worked on. So why go with Agent Venom over Eddie Brock Venom? Oh, yeah, we, we ended up going with Agent Venom uh, because we had the Galaxy's Most Wanted box, the Guardians of the Galaxy's theme. Uh, Flash Thompson, who is Agent v Venom, joined the Ga Guardians of the Galaxy at some point. So uh, we wanted another character who kind of focused on weapons. And, and two, you know, you've got sort of the five staple Guardians of the Galaxy that most people are aware of, but uh, we wanted to just pick sort of a, a sixth character that sort of uh, encouraged people to look into the comics if they hadn't. Like, I don't, I, I actually personally didn't know that, that Venom had joined with the Guardians of the Galaxy until we had, you know, started working on this. So um, I think, you know, it was, it was nice to have a little bit of a curveball in there while also still staying true to the theme. Cool. All right. Caleb. Um, I'm going to kind of ask these two questions at once. Um, with Thanos being the stature that Thanos is, did you feel extra pressure when designing him? And would you say it was difficult to pair such a powerful villain against our heroes in Champions? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um... I feel like the more we, we delve into the lore of this game, the more we keep uh, coming across, you know, these, these iconic heroes and villains and the pressure kind of mounts, like uh, as our community grows. And as I mentioned a second ago, everyone's always saying, well, where's my favorite hero? Like they're so highly anticipated that, yeah, there's, there's absolutely pressure. Um, and uh I, it's, it's great to have, you know, a coworker like Boggs and, and other people in my department to talk to about it because, you know, it, it's, uh, it can be, it can be almost distracting, you know? Um, 
but as you know, through through our teamwork and and kind of the camaraderie we have, um, you know, we just help each other focus on on the upsides and and just the opportunities that we have to do something really fun and exciting with these you know hotly anticipated characters and. Um, we're good sounding boards for each other to say like, you know, Hey, this, this is really cool. This is absolutely what I would want to see. So I always start out nervous, um, you know, thinking like, geez, we get one shot at a Thanos scenario, you know, uh, really want to make sure that it's, it lives up to the hype. Uh, so it's great to have a sounding board, you know, like Boggs, I can bounce these ideas off him and, and say, well, what if you did this? What would you think? And, uh, and then to be able to play test together and then get the play tester input. So that's the process that, that takes me from being like super anxious kind of down to like, okay, yeah, I think we got something really good here. Kind of goes from super anxious, to like super excited. Uh, and I'm really proud of like the final result. Um, Thanos is very powerful, but um, you know, our focus was on fun, not, not necessarily difficulty. Uh, we want to make sure that when you're playing against Thanos that you you feel like he's powerful and intimidating, but you also feel like you got a real shot, you know, at, at taking him down. Um, and then you and, lose half of your stinking deck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that will make it harder. Um, that is, yeah, that's that's a thing. But, uh, yeah, there's there's ways to, to modify the difficulty in Marvel Champions that, that we... Uh, we really leaning into more as, as we get experience at designing it so that, you know, if players find something too hard, they can swap out modular sets and put, you know, easier modular sets into the scenario. Mm -hmm. um, the one that Thanos comes with is, is actually pretty, pretty rough. It's like half the black order. There's two modular sets that make up the black order. Um, one is called the black order and the other one I think is called the children of Thanos. And they're kind of designed to complement each other. You can you can put them both in a scenario and they'll work off each other really well. Uh, but they're both pretty nasty. So if people are finding Thanos to be like really difficult, the first thing you would want to do is take out those sets and then put in some some softer, uh, easier modular sets. That's that's the number one way that we encourage people to uh, to revisit these scenarios and customize the experience that you want. Cool. All right, and we've got time for one more question. So we're gonna aim this back over to Boggs here. This is from Chuxel. Are there any planned revisions for existing hero sets to possibly update them or revise them to change, improve, or adjust their play styles? Uh, I, I, there's not really, uh, we've got so many heroes to do. I, I think Caleb kind of commented on that before. Um, there are hundreds or thousands of heroes that we could do, so. I think our plan is usually to, to focus on new heroes to sort of just, you know, going forward, we want to stay thematically sound. We want to make sure that everything we're releasing kind of helps tell the story of the set. And um, I don't think it's impossible that we might ever do a, a different version of a hero, but it's also not necessarily our focus. Like we're, we're kind of focusing on, on newer heroes. Okay, cool. And you know what, there is one more I want to ask. Sure. Just because, and either of you can answer this, you both know the answer. But, oh, oh my gosh, ETI Karasoft, Eddie Karasoft, I don't know. So is Mad Titan's Shadow going to close the Infinity Stone story arc? Oh, that's a great question. Um, yes, yes, that was always the intention. I'm really excited that we've, we've almost reached that point, right? Uh, due to shipping delays, you know, it's not out yet. We kind of hoped it would be with, with players now, but um, when players do get that box, um, I think they will see, hopefully, the plan, you know, really come together and feel like it's a satisfying end to this first phase of, of Marvel Champions. Um, you know, we planted the seeds all the way back in the Rise of Red Skull and then developed the story with Galaxy's Most Wanted, and then now we, we have the capstone of this first wave with Mad Titan Shadow. And, uh, and then we're excited to, you know, surprise players with, with what comes next, um, to really open the door to, to explore uh, some new storylines, some new themes. Uh, yeah, that was a great question. Okay. Uh, cool. Um, so I got another one just sent to me, so we'll ignore this for now. We'll go over this one. What are some fun or thematic anecdotes from playtesting any of the new heroes from Galaxy's Most Wanted to Spectrum and Warlock? So from there to here. So fun or thematic anecdotes when playtesting our new heroes 
for the last, geez, how many heroes has that been? Two, six, <laughs> seven, eight? Box, uh, how long ago was it that you were actually playtesting Galaxy's <laughs> Most Wanted? I feel that must have been like almost two years ago. It was a while ago, yeah. <laughs> it was a while ago. Um, oh man, yeah, it's, it's hard to remember. Uh, I, I, the Galaxy's Most Wanted way was, it was a lot of fun to put together. Um, it, was, uh, it, was, it was a bit challenging because we really wanted to highlight the, the uh, Milano ship support card. Uh, that is the, the ship of, of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and figuring out how to do that in sort of like a very streamlined, elegant way, and then building all the scenarios around that, you know, took a lot of focus. Um, but in terms of like individual heroes and stuff, like for the most part, the, the heroes all came together uh, pretty pretty well. Um, I don't believe that really any of them had, had too big of revisions or anything like that. Like we, we had pretty strong um, mechanics within our vision for, for, for each hero, uh, and then just sort of built from there, so. I wish I had better stories. I was just saying, like, yeah. I, we just I, don't know, like, oh, that was... I don't know how much we've already talked about it. I know I've told some people, but I really enjoyed playtesting uh, Galaxy's Most Wanted with you. That, uh, And I know I've told you that before, but I don't know if that's an anecdote that we've shared. But honestly, uh, that was just before I think they, they sent us home. It was not long before we had to start... Uh, working from home, so it was kind of like the last time that we really got to yeah. uh, sit at the same table uh, in the office, and 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 uh, that was just some of the most fun I've had playing Marvel Champions. You know, we took Rocket and Groot through the whole thing and just had a great time. Unfortunately, I don't have any fun anecdotes like that for for uh, Mad Titan Shadow because most of the development was done remotely. Um, right. So I mean that that's a totally different experience of uh, just being a little bit more isolated. Um, that was a challenge. So, but fun times playing Rocket and Groot. Nice. All right. So, I'm getting some very confusing messaging on my device here. <laughs> so I was uh, I was told that we should maybe do one more question for each, or just one more question, or just end it. Whatever we want to do. <laughs> so. You all have 30 seconds. The timer is now. Zero, one, or two. That's how many questions you get. The most votes wins. Okay. okay. <laughs> Let's show off the game mats while we wait. Yeah, show off the game mats while we wait. <laughs> Sorry, I, I had to tell everybody what was happening because I'm looking at my phone and my head is probably talking a little bit more every time I get a message like, what am I supposed to do? Your head is the 30 second. Yeah. <laughs> but nobody can see it now. They're looking at playmats. All right. What is it looking like? Everyone's saying two. Okay? Everybody wants to so continue on. We will. Leg, but, you know, it's two, 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 two. Oh my gosh. All right. We're going to do one more question, maybe for each. Maybe. I, I don't know. So um, let's see. Let's do. I mean, this doesn't count as one of them. How many sleeves are gonna, they going to need for Mad Titans? Do we know how many cards I, are in the box? I think it's like 260. <laughs> that information should be on the back, 268, back of the box. 268, something like that. 260-something. So you need six packs of gray card sleeves from Game Genic. That's even better. Boom. All right. Haha. <laughs> I answered a question. I'm so good at this. Uh, da -da -da. How many sleeves? There we go. Um... So, I don't know if we... Oh, oh, I like this one. How can a hero Nebula fight villain Nebula? <laughs> so, per the technical reading of the rules, she can't. Uh, the villain Nebula is a new, unique character. The hero Nebula is a unique character. Um, so, you know, you can't have two characters that are unique and play at the same time. But if you really want to do that, do that. If you want to imagine a scenario like in uh, Endgame where there's multiple nebulas, uh, spoilers for anyone who has some <laughs> Endgame, uh, my apologies. I, Caleb at least gave a spoiler alert That's before true. he went into That's the spoilers. What I is... Apologize. Wow. Uh, so if you, if you want that situation, you can totally recreate it. I think that's a lot of fun. I encourage you to do it. Uh, the rules say not to, but I break the rules all the time. So <laughs> do whatever you find is fun. I think that's the important thing about Marvel Champions. Cool. Um, and then, ooh. So I'm going to kind of pair these two questions together. Um, who would your favorite villain be to pair the Infinity Gauntlet with? 
and how are the Infinity Stones implemented in the game? So I guess let's do how they're implemented, and then who would be really fun to pair it with. Yeah, yeah, I'll talk about I'll talk about how they're implemented first, because um, that that's that's kind of a fun story. You know, originally we thought of the Infinity Gauntlet maybe being just part of of the Mad Titan Shadow Box, right? Like for sure it would be in the Thanos scenario, and once we change the story to where Loki was the final villain, then he would he would get to use it as well. Uh, but somewhere along the way, you know, it, it just made sense, like, why, why would we limit it to this box? Like, imagine the value if the Infinity Gauntlet was its own modular set. So I think the reason we were inclined to keep it in the box first was, was just because it comes with its own set of rules. You know, it's not like any other modular set where you just shuffle it into the deck. You right. do not shuffle the Infinity Gauntlet, uh, you know, into the deck. Uh, instead, it's uh, it's an attachment that uh, that goes on the villain during setup, and then you have the six Infinity Stones make their own Infinity deck, and then the Gauntlet interacts with that. Uh, so the Gauntlet, I don't know if we're showing it up for, for people right now or not. Uh, we, we probably should if I'm talking about it. Um, see if I can call it up there. It was in it was in my stack. What card uh, number is? Oh, is it in the stack? I, I believe so. I, I believe I had it on the list yep, there. Yep, got it. Yeah. So uh, the Infinity Gauntlet, you can see, uh, has the setup keyword, which means it's it's gonna go attach to the villain during setup. It also has permanent keyword, which means it it cannot leave play. You can't get rid of this. You 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 can't like take this away from the villain. So um, right away, it's giving plus one scheme, plus one attack. Uh, but it's the forced response that really gives it its power, and it says after attached villain activates, resolve the special ability of each Infinity Stone in play. Otherwise, put the top card of the Infinity Deck into play. So it's going to do one of two things: either it's going to trigger the special of one of the stones, and they're all bad for you. You know, they're varying degrees of bad for you. Uh, or it's going to put one into play, which will resolve the next time the villain activates. It doesn't matter. If the villain's scheming or attacking, it's using the stones to uh, to your disadvantage. Um, so that's where it started. It started as part of, of the box, and then we thought, you know, it would actually be a, a huge value addition if we just went ahead and wrote up the rules and said, this is a special modular set that you can use in any scenario, uh, but it comes with its own rules. And so that's why it has its own, like, graphic design treatment. It looks different from, like, a regular modular set because it has its own rules. Um, so yeah, yeah uh, to get to the next part of the question then of like, who are we excited to use it with? I, I think everyone in the office immediately was like, Rhino. Rhino's the <laughs> right. Give yeah. Rhino the gauntlet. Imagine Rhino all everything. the things he could be breaking and taking yeah. with the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> you know, like why wouldn't you give it to Rhino straight away? That's that's the first person. I don't know if you need another person to have it, but you could give it to uh, Red Skull. That would be pretty scary. Since he's already given out side schemes every turn, now you have uh, Infinity Stones as well. I mean, there's just so many possibilities. Um, so yeah, there you go. That's <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. Other than Rhino or Red Skull, who would you want to put the Infinity Gauntlet on? Um, I don't even know if it's allowed to go on anybody else. Uh, I think that <laughs> I'd probably put it on maybe maybe Green Goblin. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, the second Green Goblin scenario where he's got all those minions, like the minions and the Infinity Gauntlet could be pretty dangerous, so I'd probably do that. Nice. Cool. Well, now that we've answered more than the two questions everybody asked for, you're welcome. I want to thank the two of you for joining. Oh, and I didn't mention this earlier. I don't know if any of you could tell. Caleb's not actually here right now. <laughs> Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> gotcha. Um, but thank you both for joining. I truly appreciate you being here and chatting with me and all of us about this wonderful game. And thank you all for joining. We appreciate you. Without you, this would be much more boring. And for anybody who hasn't done it yet, go ahead and click that thumbs up button for us. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell if you haven't done so yet. Go and check out all of the links down below to get to any of our social medias. And we will see you next time.